start by saying this is mostly for informational purposes only. If anything causes pain, it's not the intention and please stop. And if you aren't sure whether these exercises are safe for you, please consult with your doctor. But we've actually, um, I decided to run this class because a couple of people had asked me, ever since I got home and I started working on my computer, my wrist started to hurt a lot. Why do you think it was my wrist, you know? And so I, of course, asked the question, are you using a mouse a lot? And it was, yes, you know, I'm using, I'm on my computer a lot more than I used to be. I'm using my mouse. And I was like, ah, I will teach a class on that. So many people, so there's a concept that I'm going to introduce today and then I'm going to, and the concept is um, that we need core stability for distal um, mobility. But really the concept is um, that closer to your body, the bigger joints need to be very stable to allow for the proper amount of muscle work further away from the body. So further away from the body would be the wrist as compared to the shoulder is closer. When you look at the foot, the foot is further away from the body compared to the hip. So a lot of people, after they spend time on a mouse, which has amped up since everyone has had to go to digital stuff, and or it's springtime and they've gone and they have, um, they're using a hammer to fix something and they're not typically using a hammer. That's a common one where wrist uh, pain is found. Um, for me personally, um, I find that bike riding, um, particularly if the handlebar isn't really set properly for myself. Um, and I have what I would call junk in my wrist. So because I've had 20 plus years of doing a lot of manual labor in here. So I just have some scar tissue into my wrist. And for me, keeping my wrist neutral is that if I am gripping too hard at my handles, my wrist bothers me. And that, of course, is anxiety provoking since my job is typically with wrist. So um, <clears throat> what was I going to say? So the, the, so when you think of your, if you think of your arms as a unit, let me show my arm a little bit here. So when you think of your arm as a unit, a lot of times what ends up happening with wrist issues is perhaps if you are on the computer, okay, it's going to be a little bit of an issue with both posture and the issue is also going to be with muscle strength. Okay, but really posture is a muscle imbalance over time that has produced into inequality. So a lot of times if someone is having a wrist issue and they spend time on their computer a lot, okay, with the mouse, and there's a whole class on how to set your body up correctly so everything's at a right angle. But specifically for the mouse, a lot of times where the keyboard is or where the mouse is, a lot of times the mouse is too far forward. So what we might do is we have our, our, our shoulder hiked up to sort of support the hand. And then we have this here and we're doing a lot of over um, flexion at the wrist with gripping a lot with these things. And the reality is, is um, if our shoulders aren't as strong as they should be, or the muscles are in imbalance, or um, if the muscles are in balance and then the elbow's a mobile joint, but our wrist is going to have to grip extra hard to be able to handle it. That's either gonna happen because we asked it to do something more than it should have, than it was really strong enough to do, or the whole body isn't working well as a unit. So first, I just want to also say a lot of people that get carpal tunnel-like syndromes um, will improve, um, particularly if by, by improving their shoulders. Sometimes even people who have the surgery um, to correct the carpal tunnel, which is really cutting of the tissue and creating more space in there, will not really have it corrected. So, but... If you have, let me just say this first. If you have um, pain that was coming from your neck and going down to your wrists, 
or you have pain that is alternating from one side to the other side or to the other side, okay? It might be coming from something more central like a disc issue, okay? So know that if people have bilateral or both sides issues, it might be coming um, from more like a disc or a vertebrae coming more from the neck, okay? So I'm really referring to mostly one-sided issues that are related to a less than ideal shoulder strength compared to what we're asking it to do. When it comes to the computer, it's a lot of times that we, are, we don't have our shoulder at the proper right angle, we're hiking it up too much and we're gripping the mouse too hard um, compared to what we should, okay? So what I'm gonna show you exercise today is a couple of ways that we can create more stability in the shoulder um, and slightly better alignment in the shoulder. The whole class that we did on how to set your desk up more properly or how to sit better at your desk would also be ideal, okay? But this one is a little bit more specific as opposed to just stacking um, the body on top of each other correctly. It is also to create, to stack the body up and create the strength that we need right in the scapula and shoulder blade so that our, our uh, we don't have to grip too hard with our hands and our arm works together as a, as a unit better. Um, I feel like I'm a little off today. Does anyone have any questions before we get started? Okay, so I'm going to show you the exercises first, and you've seen almost all of them, okay? And, and uh, you've seen all of them, but we're going to go over them, and then I'm going to go over some more practical ways of specifically addressing how you could set up the computer better for your wrist, and a few ways that you can address the tissue better, because if you overuse by over gripping at your wrist, all the tissue in your forearm will also get micro tears, they will get tight. It's not that there isn't an issue here, but the cause is gonna a lot of times come from the shoulder not being stable enough. Okay, so the three exercises we're gonna do is frog pullovers, okay? And frog pullovers we have done before. Uh, standing arm circles is a new one for everyone and standing elbow curls. And while I'm closer to you, I'm just gonna show you a couple of points with each of them. With the frog pullovers, okay, we're going to have um, the hand, the elbow is gonna be relatively locked. So it's not that things are bent, it's going to be moving from one. And you're only gonna bring your elbow as high up to the ground, we'll be on the ground. Yes, Sally? Oh, sorry, I was just going with oh, you. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> you're only going to bring, if it causes pain to go all the way to what is going to be the ground, then you're only going to go where it feels comfortable for you to go, okay? Then um, when it comes to standing arm circles, okay, the, they, they have you do something called um, a gulper's grip, which looks like this. It's actually a pretty active hand, okay? And both, um, and the, the wrist is gonna be locked in neutral, um, both for the standing elbow curls and the arm circles. So we're gonna have the golfer's grip, but the arms are gonna be out, and I'm going to make little circles, and my body's gonna bounce a little bit, okay? We're gonna do these in a second with me standing up. And then, so in one direction, our thumbs are gonna go towards the front with it straight, and then the other one, the, the, it's gonna go towards the back. And then for the standing elbow curls, we're gonna stand to do them, but I have the same with golfer's grip, but if you had to, you could have active hands here, okay? But we're gonna come forwards and we're going to come back. And you're going to feel the movement sort of between the shoulder blades, but it's not about the wrist collapsing. It is about one piece of the whole elbow is staying in one piece and the activity is going to happen between the shoulder blades. This is a really great one for anyone that spends a lot of time sitting at a computer, sitting at a sewing machine, sitting doing artwork or everything because we spend all this time with our shoulder blades. Well, not only are our upper body curved over like this, but our shoulder blades are more like this. I mean, if you just imagine how many of us have held babies and held grocery bags and we spend all our time like this, we rarely spend much time 
moving into extension. Okay, so now I'm gonna go set up my video so I can show you what it looks like when you're standing up. And if you lose me, just yell or something, hopefully. Okay, so I'm going to start with the, the frog because um, this one is going to help a bit with alignment of the shoulder. I mean, of the pelvis. So really we want the bottom of the pelvis that we're sitting on to be stacked over the thoracic area and then our shoulders to be stacked on top of that. So with frog, you're going to lie on the ground. There's going to be an arch, slight arch under your back. Let's see. Let me move forward a little bit. Okay. I'm just going to have, I'm going to allow the arch to stay on my back. I'm not going to force it either way. It's going to be natural. I'm going to bring my knees together and then I'm going to allow my knees to open up like this. Okay. So now I'm going to relax. This feels okay. And I'm going to take my arms and they're going to be relatively locked. And I'm going to bring it back as comfortable as I can into the ground and back up again. And depending on how difficult this is, some people have no problem doing this. Some people have a challenge with the mobility. And if anyone can't do this and you want to find an alternate way of working on it, it's very easy to do it. Are your yeah. feet touching? Pardon? Are your feet touching? Relatively, yes, okay. they are. Now this is the frog. This, the, what I'm doing with my lower legs, see how my legs are frogged out? If for some reason, this is going to make your lower back curve a little bit. If your lower back was too uncomfortable to curve, maybe you have stenosis, maybe for whatever reason, you always could come like this as well. Just have your legs like this or even have your legs straight. But any of these would be, would be fine for the lower leg for you to go into frog if your back can handle the frog is going to um, work on the fact that most people when they sit are going to sit with their back in if you're going to sit on a chair a lot of times we're slumped like this a little bit what the frog does is it adds a little bit of an extension in the back as i'm asking my shoulders to to move in that way which can be really helpful um, compared to how people sit. Okay, so this one is, I think, the new exercise for everyone. It's standing arm circles. So I'm going to stand with my feet pointing forwards. You can kind of see that they're forwards, okay? That actually makes my knees knock a little tiny bit, and that's okay. It does mean that I should probably work on my hip strength. Oh, you know what? Let me... I'm going to stand that way, but I'm going to move it like this so you can see my upper body better. So now I'm going to have that golfer's grip with my hands, okay? I'm going to squeeze my shoulder blades together, and I'm going to make little fast circles going forwards. Now I'll show you from behind or from the side, but I'm actually moving a little bit forwards and backwards. And one of the things that's letting me do is it's making sure my body is stopping me from falling each direction. Now I'm gonna move my um, thumbs pointing back and I'm gonna have the circles go in the other direction. Most people have more problem in this direction than the other. So what it's gonna look like from the side You'll see my body a little bit, but I'm moving ever so slightly. But this exercise is really going to have you stabilize your shoulder and then kind of get the muscles to work. And then now I'm going to stand. You don't have to do elbow curls against a flat surface, but I have one. So now my feet are pointing forwards again. I'm going to have the golfer's grip and I'm going to have my hands by my ears and I'm going to bring my elbows forward and I'm gonna bring it back. You can do this also on the ground. There's many ways that you can do elbow curls. I find a lot of people have issues that elbow curls, um, correct. <laughs> One other exercise, since I'm right here against the wall, um, 
is called windmill. And a lot of times what happens when we're spending a lot of time on a mouse or, for example, I am very right-handed dominant and I spend much more energy going like this in a massage than I go in this with a massage. And one way that you can work on this is I have very active hands. I'm up against a wall. I'm going to stay solid from here down, but I am going to do a windmill on the side and back. Now this isn't one that I gave you guys, but it is easy to add in. And then you can adjust the width. So when you think of what exercises could be helpful, to each person, you're gonna have slightly individual reasons of why that might be helpful. But most of us are going to spend too much time, whether it's on a sewing machine, whether it's playing with kids, whether it's doing art projects or reading or on our computer. We're going to spend too much time in that slump C position with our shoulders instead of up in alignment with strong scapulas holding ourselves in place. We're going to have too much of this or too much of this, you know, and usually it's an element of both of those. So the exercises that I had given you today were meant to stack your body up properly, remind your low back to have a little bit of a curve, create stability into the femur as it relates to the scapula, and then remind the scapula and encourage it to sort of go, um, I'm not good with scapula directions, but to, to come back into the correct position. If you guys have any questions on the exercises, the E sizes that I gave yet before I go into the ways that you can address it. Okay, so if you end up having wrist pain from any or all of the activities, or you have something like golfer's grip, golfer's grip and tennis elbows, or golfer's <clears throat> elbow or tennis elbow tend to be tendonitis in some of the flexors or extensors of the lower arm. They often happen because of muscle imbalances and or muscle imbalances that came from postural things. So you're, you know, you're swinging at the golf course and you're, you're gripping too hard and you are swinging mostly using your arms instead of your hips, all sorts of different reasons like that. You are also going to get in your flexors and extensors, tissue that is fibrous and tight and sore and painful and crunchy even a little bit. <clears throat> so many ways that you can address this. So for, I don't know how many of you are familiar with massage cups. Um, this is one of my favorite ones for this area. Um, I like this one for jaw. I'll show you real quick. Um, you can, if you leave this for a very long time, you could break some blood vessels, but for the most part, it's going to decompress tissue. So let me show you. So a lot of people, and you never want to do uh, cupping right over where areas of endangerment, like right over where your nerve and veins are right here or right in your jugular, okay? But, and the lighting might not be perfect, but for people who have, uh, tissue issues, this feels amazing. It's probably the number one thing. I mean, massage is helpful, but I, I really have to say that um, I do a lot of cupping in my practice, and I have for many, many years, and the ability of this tissue to break up, um, it's not particularly scar tissue, but they call it densification of the tissue, makes a massive difference. This is probably the biggest thing that I can do for making a difference. You can find these, um, you can find many of these at Amazon. This is a very, very small one. This one I get from Ace Cupping and it feels awesome. This size cup is two centimeters and I like to use it um, on the forearms and I like to use it on um, the jaw. 
And then another tool that I really like to do, in addition to any massage that you might do, is something like a kinesio tape. So a kinesio tape, or this is actually rock tape. Um, I've taken a lot of rock tape classes, but tape is a tool for us to address how our brain feels an area. And depending on how you use that tool, or in this case, apply the tape, it's going to work on how our brain reacts to the area. So we, we can either use it to um, upregulate or downregulate um, your nerves. But I'm going to show you most people in this area, because your, your tissue is tight or fibrous or sore, you're going to want to calm down those nerves. You're going to want to um, not overstimulate the nerves. We want to kind of calm down the nerves. We want to increase circulation. We want to calm down the muscles. So we're going to tape for down regulation. So we want to put the body as much on a stretch as possible, which this is sort of what the wrist um, on a stretch looks, okay? So because the whole body is a unit, I've brought my arm as short as I can and I've bent my wrist. This makes it longer, actually, than if I went like this and straightened it out. So I'm gonna make it as short as possible and try to apply it while also showing you guys. So something might go wrong here. So most people would feel better if they applied it. If you look at where my elbow is, you're gonna apply it right about right here. You never apply it with a stretch. So now I'm going to put the stretch on the body and I'm not going to put the tape on a stretch and I'm just going to apply the tape. Okay. So now the tape is on and I should have probably picked a darker color. Can you guys see where I did the tape? It's hard because it's sort of my skin color, but the tape is right here, but the tape is already going to give different signals to my brain because a lot of times when you have pain, pain is really the signal that your brain has that something is going on and the signal is either correct and it's really meant to protect you in some way. Um, like something is hot. I got to step away and or it's because your brain doesn't have a good sense of that area and it doesn't know what's going on. So it says, I don't know what's going on in that area. I'm going to fill it with pain just to give them to, to fill it, you know? So this is already going to give signals just by having it on to my brain to, to calm down, to down regulate, to, to just like relax a little bit. It also gives me a handle because the tape is nice that I can squeeze it and I can pinch it a little bit and I can wiggle it. And then the more that I've moved, particularly with a longer piece that I've moved my arm around and that tape, which is slightly stretchy, is going to pull um, in different directions. It actually is going to give more space underneath the tape for those nerves. A lot of pain that we have in our body doesn't come from the big nerves being pinched. They do happen, but a lot of times it's also the little guys much closer to the surface um, that cause discomfort for us. Any questions on those tools? There's other tools that you can use. I have just found th these two to be the most effective for forearm discomfort. Any questions on the tools? Okay. What so the percussion massagers that seem to be so popular today. Pardon? How about the percussion massagers that seem to yes. be so popular today? So are you, I don't have them down here with me. Um, they are, okay, so if you think about tools, okay, and you think about what I just mentioned about upregulation or downregulation, I've been doing a lot of classes with um, rock tape, actually, which has a whole functional movement screens and functional movement testing, but they really specialize in either upregulating nerves or downregulating nerves. So it depends on what you want. So the speed of the percussion, the depth of the percussion, and the um, so speed and depth will make a difference. Okay. If you want to 
downregulate or calm something down, you want slightly deeper. It does, it's not like majorly deeper, but you want slightly deeper and you want slightly slower. Okay. A lot of people that come for massage and get benefit from massage, it was because slower and deeper tended to be very helpful to them. If you need to sense your body better somewhere, that is where faster and lighter comes in. As much as those, so lately I've seen most people advertising things like, um, I have a Hypervolt. I lent it out to someone before COVID, so I, I don't have it back. Um, the Hypervolt, the Theragun, the, the ones that sort of look like a gun that look very, very percussive, okay? They actually, as much as they advertise that they're for very, very deep, they're very fast, and for the most part, if you were using it correctly, you could you could either adjust the speed to to work on down regulation or up regulation. But I see them used more often by professionals to up regulate, and up regulation would happen more for your brain doesn't have a good sense of what's going on in that area, and we need to connect the brain better. So when I was working with you guys on your feet and you have different nerves even in your feet, but if you couldn't feel the ground properly and you had used, um, you had used my little bumpy guy or, or the bumpy things and you had moved fast and light, okay? Then it's going to help you um, upregulate. Your nerves are going to feel better. Okay, it's not necessarily hard, but your brain is going to feel better. Your nerves are going to have a, you know, they're going to increase in activity, and they're going to be able to feel things better. If I had taken a ball, whether it was bumpy or not, and we had sort of gone slow and slow and press in, or my forearm, let's say press in and press in and I'm moving slow, then we're going to work on down regulation, okay? So if my muscles are tight and sore and overworked, I probably want to use down regulation, whether I use a tool like a ball or I use a tool like um, a cup, which is gonna, um, a cup is a little different, I'll explain about a cup. Um, or if I'm going to use a, um, any of the tools like a, like a therapy gun or I actually prefer a tool is only as good as you actually use it appropriately. And I have a, a eight headed, very big massage tool that I have used um, for a couple for my entire practice that I, I'm so good at using. Um, I don't like to go to other tools because I know how to use that tool correctly. But say you were going to work on the tissue in that with any massager, okay? For mostly for this area, I'm probably going to want to downregulate. My tissue is overworked, okay? If I was to use the same one on the bottom of my feet to um, increase uh, my brain's ability to feel the bottom of the feet before I could do an exercise, I'd probably want to do it very, very fast and not press really hard and only do it for about 10 or 15 seconds. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. All right. So I was going to talk about uh, the different tools, um, different tools and how you can use them. So sitting correctly and having your shoulders, a lot of times where wrist issues come in is the shoulders are sort of like this, and then we've asked the wrist to do a lot of work. But when we're sitting at a computer, if we can have our body more at right angles, and ideally if we could have the mouse where um, the mouse could be situated where it was good for my hand, as opposed to moving my arm to where the mouse is situated. So if I could, instead of having to lean like this to do the mouse, okay, I could have my arm resting at the side with a neutral wrist. So this is a neutral wrist. This would be um, flexed. This would be extended, okay? But a relatively neutral wrist 
that I could just click with my mouse. It's gonna be a little bit more ideal, okay? Some tools that we could use to do that. Um, so it's not so bad if you had your arms forward, if you were resting, resting maybe on a table, and now I still have a neutral wrist and I'm not having to use my muscles to hold my shoulder up because I'm leaning on the desk. So if you were to do that, it would probably be just fine for you, okay? But even more ideal is maybe you have your computer screen set up so that your eyes are level and then I have moved uh, sort of a pull-out tray which could have the mouse to one side or um, an external keyboard that I could keyboard right here because now my eyes are neutral, my shoulder is neutral, okay? And then my, my whole shoulder doesn't have to be held up to reach out to do the mouse. There's a couple of tools you can use that can help. I'm gonna sh demonstrate how this looks. Um, but on Amazon and everywhere else, you can get these mouse pads that have, um, uh, what do they call it, a wrist, a wrist support. <laughs> yeah, so let me show you sort of what that might look like. Okay, so if I am at my computer, okay, and either I can, I'm resting here on the table and I'm using the mouse like this, this isn't bad at all, okay? But if I can come here and now my wrist is resting on this and I can just go like this, this can be helpful to keep my, my, my wrist neutral, okay? And you don't have to buy these guys, they are convenient, but say you didn't have one, and I'm gonna use the mouse, you could take a little roll towel and maybe tie it together so it sticks better, and you can use this to keep you neutral as you do the mouse. Any questions? If I was gonna specifically talk about the massage tools, um, having played with a lot of different massage tools over the years, um, and the tool only being as good as the person that uses it and is using it appropriately, almost any tool could be used incorrectly and or potentially harm someone or even a tool could you know any tool could be used correctly or incorrectly but um, I do find that the vibration is pretty deep in theory when you have too much of a vibration that is done over an area and the area is too bony in other words the tissue isn't able to absorb it what tends to happen is the, the device bounces a little bit. Um, so I found like I had a Hypervolt, which is a very expensive version of those Theraguns, which go from all sorts of different price points of probably $99 to over $400. Um, but I find that this area right here is probably um, not, it's too bony. Um, it doesn't have, even, even for me who I'm a little heavy, um, it would bounce because I don't really have enough tissue to absorb the energy of that, uh, of the gun part of it um, and to absorb the energy. So to, to almost protect you, it will bounce, it will almost bounce off of you. So I probably wouldn't find that the most effective. I could show you a couple of other tools that I have nearby if you are interested and seeing some other things that you could do. Um, if you had a foam roller, let me put this up. If you had a foam roller, okay, they aren't necessarily the easiest thing to do for the arm, but you could, I would sort of roll in on the areas that were more sore. You also can, like as a massage therapist, I will tell you, my arms used to get tight. I used to, if you rested on a firm surface, and this is a little giving, but if you rested it on a firm surface, I'm gonna relax my right arm, which is the one being massaged, but I'm going to ease in with my left. And actually this feels really good. <laughs> 
I haven't even been using it very much. So this is another way that you can self massage. And this is slow and deep. So this is going to be um, for down regulation, where for some reason I thought to myself, okay, my arm isn't sensing it. There's something going on where my brain isn't feeling it good enough. Maybe I would take my little guy and I go real fast over it to work on make sure that my brain was having the proper picture of it in my head. Right. Any other questions? Either related to wrist, shoulder, tools. I'm learning a lot about tools. Hmm. In part because I'm going to try to help people from afar. So I, my hand is a tool, but I can't necessarily use my hand on people right now. Um, what I was going to say about a cup, almost everything that I was using was pressing. Cupping pulls and creates space. So it works very well for massage, but it, it works sometimes if it hurts to press in. Cupping, which pulls out, is almost always more comfortable. Cupping will also create space. So if two areas of your body are kind of stuck together, either with the scar tissue or just because you lack movement in that area, this will create more space in that area, which allows things to move around a little bit more. I use cups a lot in my practice, either light or heavier. Did you have a question, Sally? I do have a question. Um, I've got really sore thumbs and they're very weak. I can pick up a cup, but I find it painful to pick up a milk carton, for instance, a heavy okay. So it's, it's these, they're very weak. With mm -hmm. all this, is all this similar? not so much the wrist as the thumb there can be specific issues with the thumb that are separate than the whole line okay but the thumb is part of the whole line okay so you're absolutely going to want to make sure the whole thing is addressed okay yeah. um but i have a question like if you were to just say why might i have a thumb issue in my 20 year career, one big issue that people had is they didn't have phones or devices and they did have phones and devices. Um, there is a particular type of tendonitis and I don't know if this is what's going on with you, but there is a particular type of tendonitis, okay, that happens because people are using their thumbs incorrectly, okay? And if your thumb is truly weak, this may not have been it. But a lot of people have a phone, okay, that's, it's like too wide for them. Now I have massive hands, so my phone is too good. But say I had a smaller hand and or I text using my index finger and I don't even know how I do it. But if you text using your thumb, or you have a phone that is a little bit too wide that you cannot easily hold and uh, type on, people will have an issue. Um, I'm dropping the name right now. I think it's De, De Corvin's. Um, but there is a particular thumb tendonitis that used to rarely hit people and it's extremely common right now. And <clears throat> one thing that people can do is change how they're using their, you know, how they're typing on their devices. Try using your index finger or something else. Um, the other thing is to get a smaller phone so you're not separating this so much. But the thumb, uh, so you're going to want to work on the strength of each of your digits type of a thing. And you might, you might have arthritis in here. You might have there might be quite a few things going on. Initially, I would work on proper alignment, okay? And then I would work on creating different strength for your, for your fingers and joints and sort of see how much that improves it. Um, does it hurt? Like if you went to grab something and it was heavy, do you feel like you would drop it because of weakness or because it hurt? Both. Okay. All right. Me well, too. I would start. It's not going to well, hurt. Like picking to... up a, a heavy kettle. Yeah. If I pick up. Hold on. I'll show you. Sorry, I don't. I don't want to. Fight yeah. This kettle is empty, so I can yeah. pick it up like this. If it's full, 
I've got to pick it up like this. There's no way, if I try to pick it up, I cannot, I cannot pick it up using my thumb. I can pick it up this way. Okay. When, I come out, when it's full. Yeah, so I am noticing one thing. And it's been going on for years. Yeah. It's not, I'm not addicted to my phone. I rarely pick up my phone. So, so there is an element, remember how I talked about neutrality of the wrist, okay? Uh -huh. There was something I saw that might be playing in there, which is, um, this is called ulnar deviation, which is, so this is not, so ulnar deviation happens naturally if you're not strong enough in a particular area, which is <clears throat> your ulnar slips a little bit and people tend to kind of go like this a little bit more and they tend to have a little bit bonier right here. I did notice maybe a little tiny bit of that with you. Um, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But I would work on overall correcting an ideal arm alignment, okay, and hand strength, creating more stability at the shoulder, okay, working on the individual strengthening of it. And then, and then the, there's other potential issues, but that's not going to hurt to do those things. Right, absolutely. Yep. Planning on it, thank you. Excellent. Any other questions? Strengthening the individual digits. I saw you going like this. Mm -hmm. Is that what I should be doing? Uh, that does not hurt people, okay? The other thing is, is uh, people will often have a weakness. So it is good to be strong in your digits, okay? It's also good to feel your digits. So again, that light little tool going over quickly can be very helpful, okay? <clears throat> People will often, like for, <clears throat> for me, I'm strongest in my thumb and index finger, and that's common. Usually you get weaker as you go out, okay? For some reason, I started having a problem with my index finger and my middle finger became like, so when I'm massaging, my two biggest, most powerful digits are my middle fingers and my thumb. Um, <clears throat> but I use my hands more than most people, right? So it is useful, but... If you, if you can see, there's two ways that you want to work on your digits because you might find yourself weaker in some of these areas. One is that my hand is doing the activity and it's looking like this, or, okay, I'm gonna change the position. Okay, so like this, or maybe uh, like a different position like this, okay? So it, it sometimes, and it would depend on the alignment, but sometimes, you know, changing from the alignment like this, working on it, or changing it so it's a little bit different, you might find yourself a little weaker. You can even test it, and you almost have to have someone else do it, but if you had your hands like this, and you can uh, see where you're, you know, you can see how strong you are between there, or I'm gonna test between these guys, and you can see, like, you might find like, oh, that's really weak. For me, I muscle test sometimes, and this isn't necessarily practical for you, but <clears throat> sometimes people will come in and they'll have either some sore muscles or a rib that's out up in here, and they're trying to figure out, they're not necessarily having pain up here, but I could see that their shoulder is working, so they're, they're trying to use their hands, and I can see that their shoulder's overworking, okay? I will sometimes come in here press on a trigger point and see if that makes it stronger or weaker when they're having their grip strength. It's really, really common that, you know, hand weakness is something from something further up here um, that is causing an overall weakness in the chain. So this is where alignment of the shoulders, creating a more stable shoulder, maybe addressing finer little motor, you know, motor things, but this can help your overall strength. Overall, um, arthritis will affect things a little bit, but and anything can always be improved, you know, and having a soft squishy ball to sort of squeeze it a little bit isn't probably going to hurt. If it does hurt, you know, stop. It's not meant to cause pain. It's just meant to overall, the more you use a muscle, the more you're going to, you know, attend to it.